Welcome to another glorious Thursday. I hope it's a day that uh, brings you huh, a lot of good things, maybe a lot of joy, a lot of opportunities, a lot of blessings. I hope it's a great day for you. Huh, I want it to be a great day for me too. Anyway, it is a good day. And let's, let's pause. Let's take a moment. Come in and share a little while with me. And as I call it, my little world. I want you to think a little bit about something. You know, we've noted sometimes that right at the end of that marvelous chapter of writing that Paul puts into 1 Corinthians 13, he says, the greatest of these is love. John has a lot to say about love and loving one another, loving your brother, loving God, what it means. There are great messages throughout the page of the Bible. Jesus said, we're gonna be recognized by the love that we have for one another. Those are important things to think about. But I came across a quote the other day that really caught my attention, made me think about our times and some of the things that go on. Because as you think about it, people are always looking for somebody to blame for their situation. We want to, we want to justify our, our, our shortcomings, our, the lack of blessings as we might see it in our lives. We want to see our deprived situation as being somebody else's fault, maybe a generation or two generations or five generations or hundreds of years ago that somebody did something to our family or something happened or somebody made a bad choice or, you know, it can come down to just mom and dad. And thus, my life is bad because of what somebody else did. You know, there's a quality that we need to think about in that. While somebody may have done bad things, well, I understand that. Nations against nations, people against people, tribes against tribes, and so forth. But what are we going to do about it? Quite often there are calls for reparations. Pay me back for what I've lost. I think there, maybe there is some justification for some things. But generally speaking, how do you repair something that was done a thousand years ago, a hundred years ago, when the people that were involved are, are gone? How do you fight against the culture that existed in a time? I could get off into a lot of things, but I want you to think about something and see if it has an impact in it. I don't say I've got all the answers to it, but I came across that quote that I mentioned by Cornell West. He said, never forget that justice it's what love looks like in public. Think about that one for just a moment. Kind of let it sink in. Does our public persona and our earnest appreciation of love show itself in our idea of justice? I hope so. I hope in our hearts and our minds we recognize that. You know, Peter came to Jesus with a question and he said to him, Lord, how often shall I forgive my brother who sins against me? Up to seven times? Matthew 18, verse 21. Of course, many people know Jesus responded, well, no, not until seven times, but up until 70 times seven. How often shall I set aside a wrong that's been done to me? It's a difficult thing. But one of the greatest powers we have at our disposal arises out of a sense of love, a love of self, a love of God, and a love of other people. And we call it forgiveness. Love that sets aside a wrong that is done. Go earlier in that 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians and you see it there. That doesn't account for the wrongs that were done, but it says here's where we are and let's move forward from here. Here's where we are and let's make the best with one another and of one another. That makes life better. Every now and then a couple will run into troubles with one another and they say, well, we've fallen out of love. My immediate response is we'll fall back into love. A wife will say, to, say, I don't love him anymore. So we'll start loving him again. Same from the other end. A husband might say, well, I just don't love her anymore. We'll start loving her again. 
Love is on purpose. Love is a determination. And when it comes down to wrongs that are done, it is purposeful when we think about forgiveness. Let's don't segregate and separate. Let's don't pull out in society and take it away from the individual. But the individual in dealing with individuals and looking at one another, how much further ahead would we be if we set aside the wrongs that have been done with loving forgiveness and began to move forward in the best way that we can with one another, in the company of one another, and even for one another. I gotta believe that life would be so much better. And I gotta believe that that really ties into so many things that Jesus tried to teach us. A better world begins with our love and our forgiveness of one another. It's great power. Use it well. Hey, thanks for spending a few minutes with me today. And I hope it's a day that you find the opportunity to set aside, forgive, and express love in the best way you possibly can. Thanks for being with me. We'll share a little more as we get a little further down the road. And one more time, thanks for sharing this time with me.